Alright, so we've managed to add some enemies that are actually capable of dealing damage, but let's be honest, even with lots of enemies, these ones are pretty lame. I think it's time that we get these enemies moving. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to get these enemies to function so that if the player comes close to them, they become aggressive and chase the player. To do that, we're going to start off by writing a script. So let's head down into our assets. I'm going to right click, create a new C Sharp script, and I'm going to call this one enemy movement. So inside of our enemy movement, we're going to need to start with a couple of variables. The first one is going to be a public integer, which will keep track of his speed, so just how fast we want him to chase after the player. The other thing we're going to need to do is make a reference to our player's position, so that this enemy is actually able to keep track of where our player is and how close our player is. For this one, we're going to create a public transform. Remember, transform is just the component at the top of any game object that keeps track of their position and rotation and scale. And we'll call this one player transform. Now essentially what we want to be doing at this point is simply checking all of the time to see if the player comes within a certain distance. And we'll call this one chase distance. So now that we've got our variables created, we can actually get to doing some of this calculating. And so what we want to do is constantly check to see if the vector two dot distance, and this is simply going to be a function that checks the distance between two objects at any given time. And in this case, we want to check to see if the distance between the transform position of our enemy, then we put a comma and we put the distance of the other object, which in this case is our player transform, the variable we created already, dot position. So if the distance between our enemy and our player, we can then come outside of our brackets, is less than or equal to our chase distance, then we want something to happen, is for the enemy to actually start chasing us. Now to do this, I'm actually going to create a, another variable. So I'll come back up top here. This one is going to be a public bool. Remember bool is short for boolean, which is just a variable that keeps track of a true or false statement. And in this case, I'm going to call mine is chasing. So this will just keep track of whether or not the enemy is currently actively chasing our player. Now if we move within chase distance, we want to make is chasing equal true. Now I'm actually going to come up above that statement now in our update and we're going to define what we want to happen if is chasing is true. So once we know if is chasing is true, we're now able to actually make the enemy move towards the player. Now to do this, we're simply going to take the transform dot position of the enemy. And you'll remember we did something really similar to this in our camera follow script where we set its transform position to be equal to the players. Except this time we're going to make its position equal to vector to dot move towards. Now move towards works kind of similarly to how our vector to distance worked, except that this time we're going to put the current position, transform dot position. We're going to put the target position, which is our player's transform dot position. This time though we're going to need to add a third value, so I'll add one more comma. And this time it just wants to know how fast we want to move between those. We're going to want to move at a rate of speed, but this time we want to multiply it by time. And doing that is simply going to make it so that our movement is smoother. So to do that, I'll type in time dot delta time. So at this point now, as soon as our enemy senses that we're within our chase distance, it will set is chasing to true, and it will start making its position equal to, or his position moving towards the player's position, all right, so now that we're back in Unity, you can click on your enemy and add the component we just created, which is enemy movement. Now here, there's a couple of things to fill in. First of all, we need to give him some speed. I'm going to set mine to 5. And we need to know what the chase distance is. I'll set it at 8 for now, but we can test it out later. Finally, it needs to know where our player's transform position is. So I'll grab our player and drag him into that box. Now when we test the game, you'll notice that the enemy is chasing our player and eventually actually destroying him. Now a couple things we need to do. First of all, I'm just going to set that speed to a little bit slower so that our player has the chance to outrun him. I'm also going to move our player a little further away so that we don't automatically target trigger that as soon as our game starts. And I'm also going to do one other thing. First of all, let's get rid of these other enemies on our screen. 
And what we want to do now is I'm simply going to create a prefab for this enemy. Now we haven't worked with prefabs before in this tutorial, but what it does is it creates a version of the enemy that we can spawn into the game as many times as we want, and they will all have the same characteristics. It's also nice because we can update our enemy as we add new scripts and things, and it will automatically update all the other copies so that we don't have to do that manually. To create a prefab, all we need to do is take our enemy and drag him down into our assets folder. Enemy's now in there, and you'll notice that in the game he's turned blue. So now if I make any changes, like say I decide to slow him down to 2 and make his chase distance only 5, I can then go up to where you see this overrides bar, click it, and when I hit apply all, it will apply that change to all versions of our enemy. Now when I press play, you'll notice that the enemy is currently just sitting there, but as I get closer he starts to follow me. He's a little slower now so I can run away. And things are working quite nicely. Now the only problem at this point that we really need to change is that we want to make it so that if you get far enough away from the enemy, he stops chasing you. So all we need to do to make this happen is simply make it so that is chasing gets set to false when we're not within chase distance. So remember down here in our update we check to see if we're within the chase distance. We're simply going to come down below that if statement, type in else. And this is where we'll set is chasing to be equal to false. Now, if you haven't seen an else statement before, it simply means that if the opposite of the if statement is true. So if I'm within chase distance, this happens. But if anything else is true, it will go to this line instead. So now you'll notice that as I get close to the enemy, he gives chase. But if I move far enough away, he stops. That's it for this tutorial. If you found this one helpful, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Thank you.